Today's show is brought to you by locally owned and operated Highland Rem Speedway. Highland Rem Speedway is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year with great short track door-to-door -door stock car racing in a safe, family-friendly atmosphere. Visit their website at highlandrim.com. From the family grocery hauler to fire-breathing racing engines, the one name you need to know is USA Motor & Machine, located at 51 Cleveland Avenue in Nashville, Tennessee. Give them a call at 615-726-3725 or at usamotorandmachine.com. Microcasting for your city. Talk up with us. And welcome back, everybody, to this extended edition of Pit Pass. Joe Williams, Larry Woody, with our special guest now, uh, the driver of the Arca machine this past mm -hmm. Sunday. You've had some traveling to do. Mason Mingus, uh, you've had a big week of travel. I have. We've been to Daytona um, and back so far and uh, planning on going to Mobile here this weekend. Oh, man. You ran the Arca race Saturday. Yes, sir. All right. It used to be on Sunday after qualifying. Now they've moved it to Saturday before the uh, the Unlimited, I guess they yep. call it. Yeah. Tell us about that. That had to be fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. You know, all I've been on before is short tracks. Mm -hmm. So Daytona was completely different. I had a lot to learn throughout the race. But uh, my guys were really good about talking to me, about learning how to draft and uh, moving through the field. Unfortunately, we had a really good car. But unfortunately, we suffered some uh, front end damage on a restart and had to work our way back up after pitting. I'm saying that you started ninth, yes, sir. qualified ninth. We'll go ahead and tell everybody, he wound up seventh, but he should have been fourth in my mind. That's that's kind of where I had you pegged at the moment. And with a little bit of luck, you realize one, I mean, just, just one little piece of luck, and you were in a position to walk away from there with a trophy. Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, I think we had an awesome race car, and just if things would have gone just a little bit better and gone our way, we'd have been, we'd have been walking out with a lot better spot. Mason, the new ARCA cars, t tell me about the drafting. Since, since this is your first time working on the draft, could you actually feel the difference? Could you? Because it looked like you guys were having a hard time passing each other. We were. Um, the ARCA cars, the way they're built, they're not quite like the Cup cars, and you can't suck up right to somebody's bumper in the draft, which makes it really tough to, to, get, to get a bump on somebody and, and make a run. Um, you kind of There's like a bubble of air right at about two feet, and you really can't get to people's bumpers, which makes it hard to go on the outside lane. You really you have to you have to struggle. You end up riding for about four or five laps on the outside lane to get around somebody. Mason, for the benefit of viewers who might not be familiar with Mason Mingus, give us a little background of your senior. You're a senior at Franklin Road Academy. Yes, sir. Um, I, you know I wrestle and run track, play football there. Um, I've been racing since I was seven. Started out in quarter midgets and have been moving up through different um, racing series throughout. Years. Uh, and live in the Franklin Brentwood area here. Yes, sir. I live, right now I live in yeah. Franklin. Um, I'll be moving to Mooresville as soon as I graduate in May to uh, be up with the team and work on race cars. That's what I was segueing to. This is going to be a pretty big move for uh, when you graduate in May from high school. You're packing up and moving to Mooresville, North Carolina to join your racing team, which I think Mason is moving from Minnesota down there to the heart of NASCAR country. That's a pretty big move for, uh, for a high school graduate, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is. Um, you know, instead of going to college, oh, I'm going to go to college part-time while I'm there. Um, can't go full-time because the race schedule takes up too much time. But, you know, I'm going to get up there. Those guys moved this winter to uh, have everything based in uh, North Carolina and be more available to the other race teams and things. And so hopefully I'm going to get up there and get in the shop and learn a lot in, uh, about working on race cars and stuff. What's the charm, Mason, of, of, or the lure of living in North Carolina? It's just the fact that everything is close and convenient and, and sort, as we say, sort of the heart of the racing industry, stock car racing industry? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything everything to do with stock car racing is there. Every big time NASCAR team, every uh, most of the ARCA teams, and uh, all you know, all the tr truck guys, cup guys live there. So otherwise, it's back and forth, back and forth all the time. So it's better to be there. Absolutely, yeah. To be there with those guys and travel from there to the races makes it a lot easier than having to just meet up with them on race day because of school. Larry, we'll jump on something. What a lot of folks don't know <laughs> is that. Uh, a little bit of a schedule change this year. The, the, the race is about a week later uh, than normal, which means it should have been, the, the ARCA race should have been a week ago. Yeah. And what a lot of folks don't know about Mason Mingus, you know, he, he kind of blew right through it a second ago that he, he runs track and wrestles. What a lot of folks mm -hmm. don't know is uh, he's also, uh, the past few years, been a competitor at the state championships 
in wrestling. I've asked him a number of times what he does in his, with his, all his free time. Exactly. <laughs> Did, were, were you a little upset with the timing with, with the state championships the same week as the race? I, I thought about you the other day. Yeah, you know, I was. Um, I think I, you know, I had a shot to maybe make a run at it in the, in the state championships, but um, you know, Daytona. Obviously, I was I was definitely willing to sacrifice missing the state tournament for Daytona. You're on um, one track or another. Some kind of track all the time. <laughs> yes, sir. Stay busy for sure. But well, uh, we, we were fortunate enough to win the state dual championship um, the two weeks before. So right. that was what really really counted and why I really needed to be there. So luckily those two didn't interfere. Uh, Mason, once you get settled in in Mooresville, North Carolina, kind of what are the, the what's the future plans of the team? Do you have do they have a schedule laid out, some kind of progression for you, or are you just kind of playing it by ear once you get down there and see what develops? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely playing it by ear. Um, you know, we need some different spots, some more sponsorship to be able to move on in the path that we'd like to take. Um, they, Wintron has started running a couple truck races. They ran two last year, and they are going to plan on running a few this year. And I'd like to get in a truck with them a couple times and then possibly progress into me running f for them full time next season. Um, but, you know, we definitely we need some more sponsorship to be able to do that. How much of this is, is, is sponsor dollar driven? as I think it is. And, and what I mean by that is, uh, it's obvious, without it, you're not going anywhere. But some of the teams that, I, I guess, if if Larry Woody came in tomorrow with... Uh, My big checkbook. Yeah, with, with, with a million and a half dollars, <laughs> uh, you know, would, would, would that put you in peril? I mean... Or, or, or I, not, not you, but let's say somebody in, in kind of the same situation. I guess what I'm saying is, We've we've gone from being talent based to being dollar based. Is that is that a better way to put it? Yeah, I mean I think that's absolutely right. There's nowadays it's huge. It's about your remarkability and and how well you do um, really off the racetrack with press and things like that um, to be able to get sponsorships. But if you can come to the table with big money, anybody can race a NASCAR. And well, now keeping the big money means you probably have to be able to drive. Mason, if you sought advice from any other NASCAR drivers, like your, your neighbor Daryl Walter, would say this is my this is my career goal. What advice do you give me in, in progressing to that point? Do you sought any any advice from people who have kind of maybe gone through, you know, it, w w walked previously in the, down the path you're you're trying to tread now? Um, well, I mean, I've got to talk with a couple people, um, more so just on advice for different racetracks we were going to and how to be successful at those tracks. And I mean, really, that's you know, they kind of that's the key to it. Um, is being successful along the way and being, you know, you trying to win races along the way so you can get noticed and get those sponsorship dollars. Your neighbor Daryl would be an awfully good person to get some advice from if you can contact him. I know he's kind of busy right now, but uh, yeah, he's been tied up this uh, week. <laughs> and interestingly enough, of course, he relocated from Owensboro to Nashville, but that was a different time and a different era. Yeah. I think it's probably, you know, a good career move to choice to, to move to Mooresville. A lot, a lot of young drivers are doing that right now. Now, th we'll go ahead and tell the folks to date this. This is Wednesday, so you'll leave Thursday or Friday to go to Mobile. Mobile is a half-mile racetrack, mm -hmm. high-banked, mm -hmm. um, versus the two-and-a-half-mile, really high-banked mm -hmm. Daytona. Yeah. You look, you looking forward to getting back to the short track? Absolutely. The race in Mobile is actually in two weeks. Okay. And, um, you know, it's, it's a huge change from going from Daytona to Mobile. You know, there's pretty much nothing similar to them, but... Uh, you know, short track racing is what I've grown up doing, so I really look forward to these races. I feel like um, I can bring a lot to the table in those tracks and we can make up some points. You know, we're going into Mobile after running seventh at Daytona, technically seventh in points, but out of the guys running for the full season, we're probably second, maybe third in points. So um, hopefully we can gain a few of those and maybe come out of there at least top two in points. That's kind of Amazing. where I was headed. You know, they're, they're kind of like NASCAR. Nobody, they go to, everybody goes to Daytona, and then you may not see them again until they go to Talladega. Absolutely. Your parents have been pretty supportive. I know we've talked to your dad some on Terrell Davis' radio show. They've really been behind you in this. I guess you couldn't have gotten to this point without their support, could you? Oh, not at all. My dad and my mom have been there with me since day one. Um, my dad got me um, got me my start in quarter midgets and have, has uh, been helping me ever since. What's the response to the little, uh, little fledgling flying the nest after you get out of school and moving off to another state? They realize that's... Yeah, no, what you want to do and are going to do something. Yeah, they're okay yeah. with it. You know, they're um, my dad wants me to go because he wants me to be in the shop with them. You know, we both definitely think that's going to help me um, at the racetracks, being able to communicate with them and knowing a lot more about the race cars. How are you? You you excited about moving? I mean, you're what eighteen, soon to be eighteen. Uh, girlfriend here. I do. Um, she's going to go to school at uh, Swanee University of South, but uh, 
You know, I'm it's excited. It's not that far. <laughs> That's what Missy keeps trying to tell her. That's right. It's not that far. <laughs> it's not that far. But no, I'm definitely excited. I think it's going to be um, it's going to be really helpful to me. It's a good experience. I remember when I left home to go to school. It was a, a life changing experience. I think it's going to be fun. I kind of kind of envy you off on your your adventure, Mason. It's going to be fun. And again, the old man's uh, advice was try to get into school and get you some uh, good business management classes and get get an education while you're racing too. And that way. If you make it career-wise, which I hope you do, and I think you got a shot to do, but at least you've got that to fall back on. And even if you make it as a racer nowadays, as our next guest, Deborah Renshaw, will tell you, it's such a business proposition now that you need a, a, some business experience and expertise to kind of fall back on to make sure you know how to, ha how to handle these hundreds of millions of dollars uh, you're going to be making in the, in the future. Yeah. Right, Joe? That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> I just hope he remembers us. Of course, the other half, Larry, is when we went off, it wasn't at 200 miles an hour no, like, like you're going to be doing. No, Good luck, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. You yeah, you're excited? Having fun? I am. I'm really excited. It'll be fun to follow your, your progress, Mason. As we said often, I think you're probably the most talented young driver to come through Nashville this area in a long, long time. You could be our next Sterling or Daryl Waltrip, so it'll be fun to follow your progress, and we all wish you well. Yeah, but he's not putting any pressure on you. No, of course, not, not <laughs> yeah. a bit. Just, just the next Daryl Walter. Uh, you, you, you've run at the Rim before, haven't you? I ran there once. That yeah. was actually my first late model race ever um, was at Highland Rim. It's a tough place to start, but it's a great place to have fun. Highland Rim, their season mm -hmm. opener coming in just a few weeks. We'll have more details on that as time goes by. I want to thank you for joining us today. For Mason Mingus, Deborah Renshaw, Larry Woody, I'm Joe Williams. We'll see you next time on Pit Pass. <laughs>